two of Don't Stop Together's newest content arc is out now in beta, everyone. And don't let that teensy tiny pose fool you, as it's somehow bigger and badder than its lunar counterpart taking root here. But what do the shadows of the constant have in store for us, you ask? Mine is a new main menu, of course. Riffs. And a whole lot of new nightmares that go even beyond literal new nightmares. And just like part one, we should expect these holes in the ground to expand over time every few days, resulting in more and more trouble for us. And yes, said expansion does hurt us this time as well. But let's get to it. And to kick it all off, we've got two options. To mess with the rift settings here, even if these shadow ones are solely in the caves, or vanquish the ancient fuel weaver, thus kick off the post end game for the nightmare side of it all. Thankfully for some, however, we can still choose to when exactly do just that. For you see, beckoning hands will replace Wagstaff in this equation, and they desire a offering of five dreadstone in order to officially start the spawning of rifts. Furthermore, they will only take this offering once the ancient gateway finishes it's nonsense, and let us say that this is where things get very interesting. Have you ever wanted an in-game cutscene with the Queen of Darkness herself? Good, because now she just casually shows up, repairs the damn thing, and dips out with a cheeky little wave. And with that, and about a five-day wait period, the Shadow Rifts begin. And where will we be doing most of these battles now? Well, at first I got four rifts all in the blue mush tree forest back to back to back to back, however eventually one did spawn in and near the lichen biome of the ruins, so I'm just going to assume that they will be where they make the most sense over just any cave biome they please. And how can we know that one is even kicked off if we can't find one? Well, a couple ways actually, but do note that Shadow Rifts have a similar warning system to Lunar Rifts, character quotes and all, plus a wee bit of acid rain. But don't worry, we'll get to that later. As we need to discuss the specifics of these horrifying holes. Folks, say hello to Miasma, a new environmental effect that surrounds Shadow Shadow Rifts blinds us, slows our movements, and drains our health by two every two seconds. It's very dangerous and annoying, but it is counterable. Fire burns it away, with torches making very short work of things, and while it does return after a day or so, and especially as a rift expands, it truly is not terrible once you learn to use fire. That's or wear hats. Stuff that prevents a sandstorm's impact on us will apparently counter the miasma's slowdown, but nothing can stop that health drain mind. At least not until later today. For now though, let us talk fused shadelings here. They're a new mob that will spew out of these rifts over time and grow in number as the rifts expand, boasting 1,250 health, 40 damage a bite, 10 planar damage on top of that mind, and will essentially be non-hostile unless we get close to these rifts. At the end of the day though, they're actually pretty darn easy to handle, as most of the time they're simply choosing to let their dread mites do their damage for them, but do not let your guard down. One last trick of theirs is a mobile dread mite that chases us and explodes for a lot more damage than they do, I feel, but do enjoy a new and valuable source of pure horrors once it's all said and done, and maybe just do your best to isolate one or two. Word of advice though, you are going to want to bring bright shade gear to these fights. It's clear that Clay wants the lunar endgame done before these even become a thought of ours, as our quote unquote normal stuff really isn't great here. Make notes. As it's now time to talk the somewhat hidden set piece among all this, the Dreadstone outcropping. Generated at the nearest Nightmare Fissure towards the height of the first Nightmare Cycle following a Shadow Rift spawn, or at least I believe so, these arenas also spew out Miasma, can be destroyed for additional Dreadstone, and oh yeah, spawn three uniquely named Ink Blight Nightmare Creatures ready to fight. Jitters here likes the cartwheel apparently, but that's really all he's got making him very easy to dodge and very easy to damage quickly if you can isolate him enough. Shriek sort of acts like a battleisk with their movements, which can be somewhat frustrating, but they too only have one ranged attack that hits but an area just where we were last, so avoid that while beating them down and you'll be golden. And Raspier has that leaping ability that you just saw that swallows us up and knocks us about us several times, while also boasting some melee slaps as you can see. But they look quite kiteable, so staying close is ideal and I would recommend kiting over what I'm doing here, but in all honesty folks, every single one of these new shadows is easier to handle than the bright shades. I guarantee it. So do so. Notice how the set piece becomes a normal fissure again. Enjoy two dark tatter drops per kill it seems and fight them all over again come the next nightmare cycle or so when the set piece respawns in the exact same spots 
good stuff. But now it's time to bring it all together with the Shadowcraft Plinth Kit here, crafted at an ancient pseudoscience station. It is the shadow version of the Bright Smithy, offering but four void crafts, costing pure horror and then dark tatters. But before we talk the armor, let us check the gear. Yes, the Umbrella is a stupid strong umbrella, offering 15 days of use, total protection from the rain, and even the highest summer insulation factor an item can give us at the cost of a sanity drain, as you can see, while also fully countering the facts of that acid rain we mentioned earlier. Not only that, though, this acid rain actually repairs the damn thing, too. The Shadow Reaper is next, though, and is a weapon and a tool. A tool that can harvest any pickables in a decent radius at 200 uses, but as a weapon, it deals 56 damage a hit due to its 18 planar damage on top of this 38 you see. But if we don the new armor, its hidden mechanic of growing in damage per hit reveals itself. Do note, though, that the armor does this increase in damage to all planar hits at the end of the day, but only the Reaper grows in damage, and it does deal more base damage to Lunar Mobs, while also reaching nearly 100 damage per hit if you put it all together. Just be aware that it does have a cooldown if you aren't constantly hitting a mob. But what else does the armor do? Well, each piece will reduce the nightmare damage taken, with both just doing the same, but a better job of it. Wearing both also halves their sanity drains, they stop the miasma's health drain, and they are, and make us, immune to the effects of this acid rain we keep mentioning and not discussing. So have fun. But yes, everyone, this acid rain. When Shadow Rift's active, cave rams become very dangerous as they will begin to drain our health and that will get faster depending on their intensities, will absolutely wreck any waterproof headgear that we are trying to use to stop it, and will even rot foods faster. Not only that, though, acid rains now turn every cave pond into a nighter one that can't be mined for a new renewable source of the stuff. So make notes. As to truly wrap up our day, come some final notes. Active rifts now mean an earthquake dropping cave bowlers near the player now without an enraged dent lion. Resting horrors can be found chilling on the chair relics in the ruins and can either be spooked by hitting said relics or killed if we are fully insane for some pure horror and a blueprint for replica relics. We ourselves can now sit on relics if we do so choose to do so. And finally, the nightmare where pig now drops a third blueprint for dreadstone walls that boast more health than moonstone ones, take less damage from players for whatever reason as it doesn't apply to mobs, repair to full faster, and quote unquote glow in the dark without actually providing any lights. Enjoy it I guess. As there you have it everyone, Don't Starve Together's newest release and part 2 of the From Beyond story arc terrors below. As always, everything is subject to change, and I imagine it will, but I will always be there to cover it. Just like how I covered the new scrapbook feature too, because it's just so grand and not intrusive at all. But hey, do yourself a favor and check the pinned comments as I'm actually going to link you a post to all the new sounds in this update, as yes, pickups, for whatever reason, now have new sounds. But let me know what else you found yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.